Hi all, let's have a look at another amazing game from the TSAC Super Final. In round 38, Leela was playing White against Stockfish. The opening book given to them, the English opening, 1c4. Stockfish plays e5, and we have this variation of the English opening. So an aggressive setup by Black with the early f5 and the Fianchetto. And it's here. This is the end of the book, knight c6. We have b4. So I've termed this the uh, wet lettuce system sometimes. Well, it has a very stereotypical plan here to expand on the queen side. And sometimes to play, for example, b6, trying to dent black's pawn structure, maybe put the bishop here, has been seen in a lot of uh, games. In this game, we see h6 in this position, b5 97 and now curiously a4 not not a4 e4 a4 is the more standard move so Leela chooses e4 as an example of a4 Elyanov against Rajabov uh, actually was a nice fighting game so Rajabov playing with the black pieces uh, managed to strike up some counterplay on the king side uh, like this so uh later yeah he got access to uh, some dark squares dark square bishop coming off there the g file and the dark squares seem to play in Rajabov's uh, favor so uh, let's see just a little bit more to the end this Rajabov game he got he got to use that g file and then it was very dangerous for white indeed okay so that was the Rajabov game in Moscow 2010 with A4. That's the highest level STEM game uh, I can find. But in this game we have E4. So is Leela's idea worth consideration? Uh, what What is this about? So A6 was played. Uh, first thing to note, F4, you might think, is this a dangerous kind of pawn sack? White might actually do better rather than taking, which might allow Knight H5. As a sort of positional pawn sack, white can play d4 instead, allow black to take on g3, and then play, you know, for example, like this is okay for white. There's a lot of pressure here in this line, uh, but maybe uh, it's okay. On d takes, by the way, then just taking the queen off and knight takes e5 with a big advantage. So, um, Anyway, so f4, although tempting, it doesn't seem that great. So we have a6 playing on the queen side. Stockfish playing on the queen side. Uh, so e takes, which opens the scope of the bishop. Knight takes, you might think, hold on, what about g takes? Isn't that plausible? Uh, it seems b6 might be good. So say c6, because if c takes, then white has queen b3 with a lot of pressure and the structural damage has been done but say c6 knight h4 there's a really sharp variation here uh, with this uh, where the knight is kind of loose here but counter-attacking black's knight uh, yeah this is a razor sharp line which stockfish comes up with actually uh, but it ends up favoring white after this chaos uh, slightly uh, so there's an example with you know g takes a very sharp example but in game knight takes f5 which you might think has a slight downside surely the e4 square is a classic square to use here because black's pawn on f5 you know would have been useful to cover that and now surely you know can white establish pieces on these light squares or not a4 a takes a takes bishop e6 uh, we have rook e1, knight d7, knight d2. So it looks as though, yeah, a very comfortable e4 square. On the other hand, black has d4, you could argue, and c5. So the battle of the central squares. The knight goes back there, and now knight d5. Now this is what I find interesting and controversial, and also something I played with black against my good friend Alex in the Muswell Hill Blitz tournament. I managed to lose horribly. I played a move like bishop takes d5 in a king's Indian structure. And I thought after the game, I've, yeah, I've just weakened myself on these 
light squares but this is the move you know stockfish is is playing because we have these pawns you know fundamentally on dark squares so this bishop could be a rampant piece on the light squares either this diagonal or this diagonal in my blitz game against alex he later installed a bishop on e6 i thought surely uh this blitz game i had recently has no bearing to this game whatsoever but it is a very committal decision to play bishop takes d5 why did black do this isn't it weakening the light squares positionally uh is is stockfish somehow really not seeing the long-term impact of this on c6 uh this appears as though black gets up into a passive position with c6 under fire if black doesn't you know doesn't want to give up the d5 square and plays this white has a small edge here so okay it's interesting but black you know giving up that uh maybe it had in mind some tactics against d5 knight b6 we have bishop e3 queen d7 uh here on knight takes d5 there is queen b3 so for example knight f7 knight e c3 is strong uh also is knight g5 is also strong but this is apparently the strongest with this idea just to take on d5 and white gets a dominating position strategically you can see that bishop's pretty dead on g7 white's got the uh, pressure here uh so yeah um so after bishop e3 uh this pawn wasn't taken uh so we have queen d7 and now queen b3 king h8 and now bishop h3 yeah this is starting to parallel it's it's kind of a thematic thing i guess if black gives up the light square bishop expect some pain on the light squares uh, we have rook a c8 on knight d4 which hits the queen uh bishop takes the thing is bishop takes b6 and then white's winning material there by the way so um uh, rook a c8 rook a1 rook b8 rook a3 rook f d8 and now leela voluntarily gives up the dark square bishop so that doubles black's pawns but this was the guardian of the d4 square in particular surely this knight which as we've seen in an earlier uh, round is supported by that bishop have we still got have we got a recurring containment strategy here where this bishop could be a victim of its own pawn structure or something we have rook a4 which is preparing it seems you know potentially to sacrifice the exchange on a knight d4 rook f8 was played uh but anyway the knight is pinned at the moment to the queen as well so on knight d4 it turns out here rook takes d4 it, it isn't an exchange sack uh you know because the, the queen was set this is actually just the best move here just to have this position where the knight's much better than the bishop this is kind of strategically dead for black this kind of scenario you can see that black's got very limited counterplay there so that'd be the way to play it so anyway we have rook f8 rook c1 queen f7 and now bishop g4 which is covering that f3 square and also it, it sometimes supports the idea maybe h5 sometimes if needed or just leave the pawn on h4 and let the bishop go to h3 there to sort of secure against g5 we have rook bd8 uh on h5 here by the way bishop takes is actually strong uh to go into this g5 square uh in particular forget taking on uh d6 just going into the uh e6 square is is the best thing it seems white can do with a big advantage um and and in any case uh okay okay so uh we have rook bd8 h4 king h7 uh king h1 king h8 king g2 rook d7 queen a2 some shuffling around and intriguingly king h3 is played here ah uh, what is this about this is really provoking eight things like h5 but uh stockfish wasn't uh interested in that 
uh, it seems yeah when the knight's on e4 it should safeguard things enough in any case uh, we have rook c8 rook c4 rook a8 rook a4 rook a7 and more shuffling until we get this position with knight d4 uh, that knight looks pretty dangerous on d4 it's tolerated for a moment with rook c1 but in this position it's eliminated now leader actually plays an exchange sack rook takes d4 so what's going on here uh, if king g2 if the knight was tolerated further here it seems for example h5 might be useful for black with bishop h6 and then say check say taking the pawn uh, white might actually maintain something but it's nothing really to write home about it's not such a big deal uh, so and uh, on bishop d1 that's even worse if the bishop goes there this black black really uh, is doing well there at, at least equality so uh, rook takes d4 gives black two sets of doubled pawns which is interesting structurally this huge knight on e4 a huge strategic piece one might think uh, with pressure on d6 all the time at the moment but it is safeguarding f2 uh, but to extinguish black's f file pressure f4 now which is another perk of this exchange sack that uh, this goes unchallenged playing f4 g5 seems sealed up so you can see that white has a pretty dominant controlling situation controlling the c file black structurally wrecked uh, all this like from the wet lettuce the dreaded uh, wet lettuce system or not so dreaded uh, so this exchange sack idea has seemingly neutralized blacks any black kingside uh, counterplay and white is uh, taking in the scenery and actually takes a pawn now with knight takes d6 uh, yeah it does it does seem pretty passive this position uh, so knight takes d6 if queen e7 let's just see if it was protected uh, white can just build up it seems like this uh, for example going in on c7 and this gets nasty for d4 dropping off so all sorts of nasty things can happen on queen d8 queen d1 this is another scenario a fictional scenario uh, where white's control of the position is pretty evident and um, can start undermining light squares and this kind of thing that's horrible for black big advantage there so all sorts of nasty things can happen if black goes passive uh, so queen a8 that's taken rook a1 bishop e6 bishop f6 knight e4 h5 d6 so i pass pawn in the center king g2 that's that rook is taken queen a3 bishop d5 king g7 on queen a7 trying to defend this pawn again if black goes passive white runs rampant in this position for example like this with f5 actually breaking up black's pawn chain over here and it's very dangerous for black's king safety so say taking here then black gets mated and this position if say queen d8 then uh, bishop takes and then h5 is next and it's just wonderful the exchange down but uh, white really dominates the position so uh, king g7 was played not queen a7 uh, that pawn is taken rook f7 the bishop goes back to d5 queen c2 rook takes d6 so trying to you know, counter sack the exchange queen c4 ignoring it white could have just taken that simply it seems this is although it's opposite color bishops it's pretty nasty for black white's doing well there so queen c4 here king f8 and now anyway taking now we get the same situation but with just d4 dropping off so uh white is two pawns up but you might think well opposite color bishops uh is there going to be a lot of resistance is there going to be a lot of checks and stuff uh here uh you can see that you know g6 is on the file the queen can't take time out away from g6 so um yeah the king going into the center there on e4 uh, so black's not really doing too much so let's just uh, check out how this continues a bit 
taking on taking out this pawn but it looks as though hang on there's a, a few checks on the horizon uh, so here now Queen g2 yeah and this is becoming trivial now to win this uh, without the Queens on uh, and actually this was the Kings going to be herding the pawn it seems so the King jettisons uh, g6 here in this position yeah it looks all over now absolutely all over and it is all over here officially both engines for it's plus 10 for 10 ply <clears throat> so an interesting uh, use of this so-called uh, the wet lettuce system as I call it this stereotypical expansion on the Queen side um, and that powerful exchange sack gave black two sets of double pawns plus f4 neutralizing all the f file pressure and yeah black's position was pretty fragile after that but the big committal decision which intrigues me and has a parallel to one of my recent blitz games is this bishop takes d5 i think strategically that can be often quite suspect in king's engine structures because you've got pawns on the dark squares you've got adjacent light square weaknesses it's like yeah you're giving uh more more motive uh for the light square bishop to just glide on light squares after but anyway a really complicated game Lila kept the counterplay to a minimum uh, if you enjoyed this game video then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly become a member at chessball.net to play against other youtubers you can also test yourself on the variations uh, in this and other game videos from the improved menu at chessball the puzzle books option which is a link to the annotated game comments questions donations see the description like share and subscribe with the notification bell really appreciated and form porn t-shirt is one to check out it's really cool i got it today <laughs> check out the form porn t-shirt thanks very much let's have a look at the puzzle book for this game so not too many variations in this very positional game that would have been a mistake because uh queen takes then knight takes e5 uh, this next position white's play for a clear edge i think taking here and white to play for a clear edge yeah it wasn't b take c oh knight c3 knight c3 uh, and then this this is quite a dominating position uh here uh i think we just take the queen off here this doesn't work for black because a bishop takes winning a piece here clear advantage here um So bishop takes and then actually we can head for uh, not taking on d6 but instead heading for e6 there big position uh, this is the drop of the h pawn is a disaster there uh, wait to play for a clear advantage here cat can just just take here actually that's okay as well and go for queen c6 quite a dominating position uh, clear advantage here um can I just take that if I I know no d4 is vulnerable so just d5 oh b6 nope hint king g2 <laughs> okay uh king h3 I think is key here because the queen's actually controlling h1 which means now and the bishop's controlling f1 b6 yeah some cool some cool tests I mean imagine you know revising this stuff you know a week or a month's time uh, as well as the annotated game so that's I think that's quite interesting to do okay thanks very much